Okay fine, I guess I can make a setup guide. In this video, I'll show you guys a step-by-step -step process of how to set up Language Leap AI for yourselves, and then do a mini Q&A at the end from the questions you guys sent in my previous post. For this guide, I'll be using the readme file that I wrote in my GitHub repository, so you guys can open it in another tab and easily copy and paste whatever commands that we may be running. The first step is to go to the setup section of the readme, which is all the way down here. I guess this is the reason why so many people didn't even read the, the setup guide. But yeah, I click on the first link, installing services and dependencies and then we'll be cloning this entire github repository by running this command do note which folder you run this command as this will be where the repository will be copied to navigate to the language leap ai folder which i'll be calling the root folder and run this command to install the python dependencies after that, you have the option of installing Docker Compose if you intend to run Whisper and VoiceVox via Docker containers on your local machine. However, if your computer does not have an NVIDIA graphics card or is telling you I need more power, you can actually skip this step and just run them on a the cloud using Google Collab instead. So for those of you who want to use Docker, you can click on this link and you'll see a setup guide for Docker Compose. You have to ensure that you meet all these system requirements and have either WSL2 backend installed or Hyper-V and Containers Windows features enabled. I personally recommend using WSL2, so you just click on this link, run this command in a PowerShell terminal in administrator mode, run this command and restart your machine. After that, you can run this command and ensure that you are using WSL version 2 for your Docker desktop. After that, go back to your Docker Compose page, scroll up, download the Docker desktop uh, for Windows, and run it. When you are prompted, ensure that you have the use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V option selected, depending on whether or not you want to use WSL2 backend or Hyper-V. And then just follow the instructions, to authorize the installation, and now you should be able to run the Docker Compose application. If you see this page, this means that you have installed it successfully. After that, go back to the installation guide, click this link, and scroll down, download the setup executable and run it as well. After that, go back to the installation document, click this link, and then you can install the virtual audio cable from this link here. So all you have to do is extract this extract this folder. I don't know how much into detail I have to freaking do this, but after you have extracted the files, you can run the setup executable and you select either one depending on whether your computer is 64-bit or 32-bit. After that, you might need to reboot your computer after install and open the voice meter banana application. You should be able to see this window. Finally, navigate to the audio routing documentation here. So for this section, I think it may be a good idea to watch it on a separate device like your phone since the audio from your system will be cut off at a certain step and if you're watching this video, you won't be able to hear my voice anymore. So the first step in your audio routing is to go to the control panel go to hardware and sound change system sounds after that, you can click on the playback tab and you should be able to see voice meter aux input and voice meter input. So you should select the voice meter input and set it as your default playback device. At this point, you shouldn't be able to hear any audio from your PC, but that's fine. After that, open voice meter banana, click on A1 and select your speakers or your headphones or whatever audio device you listen from. There's different types like WDM, KS, MME. Uh, if you're not sure, just select uh, WDM, which has a lower latency compared to the rest. After you have selected your A1 audio device, you can look at the virtual input section and activate A1 for your VAIO cable. Now you can actually test and confirm that you can hear your system's audio. If you can hear that, it means it's working. And then for the auxiliary cable beside it, you can actually select A1 and B2 as well. This cable pretty much holds all our application audio output, like maybe from uh, Apex or from voice chat audio from Discord. So that's why we select A1 so that we can actually hear the application's audio output and B2 which is just the auxiliary cable's output, which our Python program will be listening to and then conducting the translations on. Oh yeah, also remember to go to the menu and enable system tray and run on si Windows startup. If you don't do this, voice meter might not run when you reboot your PC, which result in you not being able to hear any of the audio because virtual cables won't be set up. So here's application settings. You would want to set the output device to be voice meter aux input. So let's say for example you want to translate a voice chat audio from Apex. This is how you set up the output device. If you want to translate audio from your Chrome browser, you can actually go to volume mixer, click on the app, your application, your browser, and set the output device to be voice meter aux input as well. If you're using Discord, you can go to user settings, go to voice and video, and then for the output device, set it to voice meter aux input. Basically, any application that you want our Python program to listen to and, and translate in a subtitler, you would want to set the application's output device to voice meter aux input. At the same time, you can also set the audio input device to be the cable output. This will be where the voice vox text-to-speech audio will be played into, so this will enable your, your
your friends on Discord or your teammates in game to hear the text to speech audio. For full screen applications like Apex or even Valorant, you can set the display mode to be borderless window because that will allow our subtitles to be displayed over it. Also, some other useful stuff you can do is like, like removing all the in game dialogue volume. This is to ensure that my Python program was not translating any of the voice lines that we hear in Apex instead of just the voice chat audio. And finally, the last step, the environment file. So again, in the root folder, you can run this command. If you are using Windows, you should actually uh, use copy. And then after that, you can open .env in the editor of your choice. Like in here, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. You can use Notepad or Notepad++, any text editor that you want. So the first variable, logging, basically just tells the program whether or not it wants to display more verbose debug information. It's up to you to leave it as true or false. These are the Whisper and VoiceVox based URLs. If they are running in a Docker container in your host PC, you can leave this as it is. However, if you are running these in Google Colab, you have to replace these URLs with public ones that I'll show you later. This de use DeepL variable basically just tells the program whether or not it wants to use a DeepL translator or just use the Google Translate. I added this in because there were a lot of people that were unable to create a DeepL account. If you don't have a DeepL account or you're just too lazy to set up one, you can leave this as false. However, for those of you who do use DeepL, you can then go to your account summary page and copy the DeepL authentication key from here and then just paste it here. The next variable is the mic as the push to talk key. The first one is the mic record key. If I set it to F, whenever I hold on the F key, my program will start listening to my mic. It'll pass whatever audio that's recorded from my mic while the key is being held down to whisper that will, that will transcribe it into text. The other key, the in-game push to talk key, is actually for apps like Valorant because they don't have any open mic functionality for team voice chat. You can actually put another key here, like for example T in Valorant. You can actually set your push to talk key to be this same, uh, this same key. And our program will basically automatically hold down this key whenever our text to speech is outputting some audio. But if your game application has settings like open mic, like in Apex, you actually don't have to worry about this environment variable. You can just leave it blank if you want. For this next section, audio device IDs, you will need to run this Python file. Say you are in the root folder, language deep AI, you can run this file you'll be able to see your audio devices along with the ID that it's associated with. The output does get cut off for the first few for the first few devices for some reason. From 12 onwards, it actually starts repeating itself, but you can just ignore the rest. Okay, so for microphone ID, for this ID, I can actually e enter either 1 or 12 or even 28. However, I would suggest picking the smallest possible number because I think if a new audio device is added, all these uh, duplicate IDs will increment and change. So picking the smallest will ensure that you won't have to change this ID whenever you install a new audio device. For voice meter input ID, you can actually just look for this name, voice meter input uh, VP audio voice meter, voice meter VAIO. So in this case, for mine, it's at ID 8. So I'll enter 8 here. For cable input, mine is at ID 6. And for voice meter auxiliary output, uh, it is at 9. And that's basically the audio device IDs done. The next section is the voice vox settings, where you can actually select the voice ID along with some other properties. If you feel like it's talking too fast, you can lower the speed. If you feel like it's too loud, you can just lower the volume. And these are like other stuff that you can play around with. Now later on, I'll show you where you can get these IDs from and what voices correspond to what number. The last section is subtitle settings. So here in record timeout, you can actually set the number of seconds you want the program to record for before stopping and translating. So for example, if someone speaks in voice chat for five seconds, the program will cut it off at the three second mark and translate and display that first bit before continuing on with the rest of the five seconds. Uh, in phrase timeout, I set it to two. So that means that if there's a two second gap between uh, talking, a new subtitle will be displayed instead of updating the current one. Request timeout is the amount of time to wait for a response from Whisper before just dropping it. Sometimes requests get clogged by Whisper AI and it only returns after like 10 seconds. So for these old responses, they might actually show up randomly and override the new subtitles if we don't set a proper timeout. For the target language code, this is the language we'll want to translate from. So for now, it's set to Japanese. If you are playing with other Korean people using voice chat, for example, you can go to this link and then search for whatever language you want. Just copy the code and then paste it here. For offsets, these are just a way to reposition the subtitles to your liking. Like X will shift it left or right, Y will shift it up, up or down. Font size is just how big you want the subtitles to be. You can actually set the color of your subtitles and the background, but do keep in mind that there will have to be at least one color that is sacrificed and will be considered transparent. And this will basically allow you to have uh, subtitles without background if you set uh, the, the sacrificial color to be the same as the background 
foreground color. And if you set your sacrificial color to be the same as your subtitle color, you just won't be able to see the subtitles, right? Because it'll be considered transparent. And that's basically it, you know, that's basically it for the setup. So now to actually start running it, uh, go to usage, uh, this usage section here. If you're going to use Google Collab, you can simply upload these two files to your Google Drive. So let's say I have my uh, Google Drive open. You can go open your file explorer, go to source, select these two files, and just drag and drop it into your Google Drive to upload it. After that, you'll want to right click on the files, select open with Google Collaboratory. And for VoiceVox, you can easily just follow the instructions, go to your runtime, change runtime type, and select GPU. After that, you can run all the cells. This might take 5 minutes or more to run everything. For Whisper AI's Google Collab file, there's actually one extra step you have to do. Go to Global Variables Cell, uh, click on this link to sign up to NGROC. And then once you have signed up, you can go to this link and copy your authentication key and paste it in this section. Also remember to uncomment the off token variable if it's if it's uh, if there's a hashtag you can just remove it and after that you can literally just do the same thing click runtime and then run all oh yeah i forgot to mention something you should actually use different google accounts because one google account is only limited to one uh, collab session so you can just create another google account upload the other collab file and then run it in another account so you see for voice vox they actually output you the url so you can literally just copy it and paste it into your uh, voice vox based url once your voice vox is running you can actually go to the slash docs page if you are running it on google collab you can just replace this url with the public url from Google Collapse output, scroll down, go to get slash speakers, click try it out, and execute. After that, you should receive a response body, which basically tells you IDs that has corresponded to each user's styles. You can go to the official voice vox website and you can kind of see all the different voices for the and the voice samples and then you are able you'll be able to obtain your voice id so for whisper you will copy your url from here the one that ends with dot ngrock.io this is the public url that we'll be using for whisper i just update it like so and then it should work if you ever see this error show up for either whisper or voice vox not only should you check whether it's running and whether the variable is set correctly you might also need to check whether that your firewall it's it's not it's not blocking requests to this public IP address. So you might have to whitelist these IP addresses. Also, once you're done using these services, remember to stop running the cell, disconnect and delete runtime. Since Google Collab does have a certain usage limit for the free accounts. Anyways, that's for Google Collab. If you're using Docker, you can literally just run this command, docker compose up. In the root folder, language deep AI folder, just run docker compose up dash D. If this is your first time running this command, it should be pulling the images from Docker Hub. And then after that, it would, it would start the containers. If you want to stop it, you can just do docker compose down and it would stop the containers from running. If you want to start just one of them, you can just add a whisper or a voice box at the back and this will basically just run only one of the containers. There are some trade-offs between using either Google Collab or Docker. Uh, if you use Google Collab, you might not use as much GPU resources since you're not running them on your own computer but there might be a slightly longer delay since they're running on the cloud and this will be take a longer time to send a request and get a response from them. If you're running Docker, the request will be much faster but it will be more GPU intensive so you might not be able to run applications like Apex along with them. And what I did in the video was actually run VoiceVox in a Docker container locally and then run whisper in google collab go into the source directory and just run your voice translator or your subtitler and it should hopefully work now that we have finished the setup guide let's see if we can speed run all the questions we have in this post the first question is your japanese is really good how did you learn it so well to be honest i don't think my japanese is that good it's probably just passable on a conversational level and when it comes to reading and writing i'm not really that good as for how i've learned japanese i basically just watch a lot of media in japanese like anime for example of course that shouldn't be the only way to learn i learn from a bunch of other sources as well like using duolingo another source is also just watching vt clips on YouTube and those clips usually have English subtitles and those are probably the best to learn conversational Japanese. Usually in anime, they used very over-the-top ways of speaking. When you're watching Japanese YouTubers or VTubers, they use a lot more conversational Japanese that you can actually use and I think the most important thing is having multiple sources to learn from. Like you can't just simply watch anime or simply use Duolingo. If you just learn Japanese from watching anime, it'll be super cringy with the how you use Japanese. If you simply use Duolingo, you would only learn the formal Keigo side of Japanese. If you're going to be using it with like your friends, it's, it'll be very awkward. And also having real life experience talking to Japanese people. Actually, one of the main reasons that I started this channel was to force myself to play with Japanese players in Apex and force myself
myself to talk to them because honestly if I am not actively making these YouTube videos I wouldn't have the courage to use voice chat and try to speak Japanese with them if you go back to my super early videos one year ago where I first started trying it out it's really really cringy honestly I really don't recommend you guys to watch it but if you want to see how how far I've developed in terms of Japanese this is like the starting point for me and I just slowly gain more experience talking to more and more people online that's the most efficient way for me to learn Japanese slowly picking up how they speak and learning from them as well next question could you discuss your thoughts on chat GBT also how I make my videos and how long it takes if it wasn't for this chat GBT AI I wouldn't have you know started making all these AI related videos so I'm actually really thankful for chat GBT but it's just so so extremely useful right how it's able to understand different nuances in the questions that you ask it almost to the point where you are actually speaking to a proper human being that's learned English for like their entire lives as for how I make my videos I use the free DaVinci Resolve software which is just a very good video editor you don't even have to get a paid version uh, most of the time you don't have you won't be using those features and as for how I learned it it's pretty much self-taught ever since I started making videos like one year ago every time I make a new video I'll try to like learn a new way of editing a new style and by listening to all the feedback that like I get from my comments or just from my friends that I show the videos to I'll slowly make improvements this is just where I've gotten like after about more than a year of using DaVinci Resolve as for how long it takes the previous two videos probably took me about an entire week of just sitting down and in DaVinci Resolve and editing everything seven hours a day just to make those two videos and of course this doesn't include the time it took to code the entire project out and also record other games that I played so that's why these videos have like about a month in between but to be honest I don't really have a proper upload schedule I just upload it whenever I'm done editing something so it might take a month it might take a week it might take an entire year I don't know next question how are you so intelligent and how are you so cool and awesome in every way this sounds extremely sarcastic no <laughs> care you guys do realize that if you start praising someone like this, it will start to sound sarcastic, right? <laughs> what made you pick Python as your preferred language? Or did you try learning other ones or was it your first? Yeah, Python was in fact my first. So it's technically the one that I know the most about, which is why I picked it. I've actually learned maybe a bit of TypeScript and a bit of React as well. I don't even think React is a language, but so learned a bit of web development. But yeah, the main reason I picked I picked Python is because it's the easiest for me to code everything out. Not a question but a suggestion, build a waifu via chat GBT and make it able to talk back to you. I am actually pretty sure someone has already done it. They even built like VTubers head also move according to what the text to speech is saying. The thing is I don't really want to use chat GPT because again it's not free even though when you first sign up you might get some free tokens. After a while those tokens will kind of run out. Will I continue making more AI related stuff? Honestly with how much fun I'm having I probably will but again we, we never know right like just like two months ago I was making if Apex was an anime videos. I only started making this AI related videos starting from from like last month sometimes you really have no idea like where your passions will kind of lead you to would love to see you try games other than apex i might try it with valorant at first i thought it was impossible to make it work with valorant there's no open mic functionality for team voice chat but thanks to a pull request from this user he actually found a way easier way to do it which i didn't think of which is just to programmatically press the in-game push to talk key whenever the voice is going to play so yeah i might i might try i might try valorant if i have the time i just watched your three previous videos regarding ai voice chat and even though you say you didn't know much about programming I think you should start making a tutorial series I don't think you'll want a tutorial for me the only thing I can probably teach you is you know what just ask ChatGPT for any issues that you have what other projects have you made with Python other than the ones on this channel I have actually made another project in my work internship but that is confidential stuff so I can't really say that I kind of developed a, a full stack Python and web application using Django as a web framework and setting it up with a Postgres database and that's pretty much all the information I can share. We'll also like to see AI directly turning your voice into a waifu voice. I guess what you're thinking of is a voice changer? What are your thoughts on AI art or AI in general? <laughs> what are these serious questions? <laughs> also do you think AI is ever gonna take over jobs of artists? I think they, they might just coexist. As AI becomes more proficient, there will just be a lot more people trying to impersonate being an artist even though they're using AI art. I'm sure that some artists who do develop their own style will be able to stand out from these. Instead of 
English to Japanese, can we use other languages as input? Your input language doesn't have to be English. You can actually speak like Chinese and Whisper will be able to translate that into English text as well. But you might need to ch make some changes to the code actually. Since right now it's just transcribing, you need to change the code to make it translate. It's only limited to the languages that Whisper supports. So like all these languages here, you can use these uh, languages as your input. Your Japanese is so good. Again, <laughs> my Japanese is really not that good. I want to learn Japanese but don't know how to start. And I'm thinking of buying a course. There's actually so many other free ways that you can learn Japanese. So I would start on those first. If you do have the passion to continue learning Japanese, maybe only then you should buy a course. Otherwise, just try a Duolingo first since it's free and it's also not a bad way to start. If you were to make a Discord server, I suggest you name it Social Anxiety Club. SIW Social Network can be the name for the Discord server. And at the end of this, I'll probably uh, pick one of these names to be the Discord server's name. What is your favorite Pokemon for breeding? <laughs> why, why is there a for breeding at the end? Why can't it just end there? The thing is, I don't even know much about Pokemon, so I can't really answer this question. I'm not that much of a Pokemon fan, so sorry about that. What will you do for the future when they make more advancements in AI for content? Basically, make a VTube model and let it play for you? Of course! <laughs> With the creation of Neurosama in the coming year, there might be more uh, AI VTubers as people try and make their own ones. So maybe I might try making one. <laughs> what motivates you to continue this project? It was just a huge amount of people that suddenly watched the video and so many people commenting and saying they want to see it. I also just want to see how far I can go with the skills that I, that I have currently. Will this help me learn Japanese? Nope. This is not gonna help you learn Japanese at all. Will you ever make a UI for this? It's actually someone who made a similar project and he decided to host everything on Microsoft Azure so you can run it with zero setup. Oh, is this guy? It's the same guy that implemented the, the in-game push the talk key. Yeah, so you can see here, he actually, actually made a front end for this. But I think this is only for the voice translator part of it. So if you are mainly just using the voice translator part, you can actually come to... It's actually really cool to see like my project inspiring people to make new developments as well. Would you mail a tutorial on how to make AI Saifu from scratch. <laughs> my entire three videos is the kind of the tutorial. I basically share my entire thought process and what I've done. But if you're thinking making something like Neurosama from scratch, maybe in the future I might try and do something like that. Could call the Discord less social net weaves. Gravity is better than just weave cord. Also wanted to add that it was insanely bold from a YouTube algorithm standpoint to split your video into two like that. I, I do know that it's actually not a good idea to split your videos like this. There, there are so many people, like in here, I planning on releasing this to the public. It's just one example of the, of those that didn't manage to watch through to the end and didn't even see the link that I posted in the comment section. You know what? It was worth it to see everyone's reaction when they saw the, the next video. Try making the AI speak other languages. Yeah, I might try it, but that will require finding other types of uh, text-to-speech systems, which would require some research. I'd like to know how you learned making AI because I'm interested in it and I want to learn. I have not learned anything about making AI. The thing is, my program is not even making AI as the title would, <laughs> contrary to what my title would, my titles would suggest. I'm simply making a program that integrates different types of AI systems together. To actually make an AI, you probably have to know more about machine learning and neural networks and stuff like that. You can try and look into those. Are you gonna start streaming as well? <laughs> Honestly, no. My parents will definitely find out if I actually start streaming at home, right? I mean, would it require a lot of custom code change or it's impossible for it to work with other voice chat apps and etc. The thing is, it, it works with Discord. You literally, all you have to do, all the changes that you have to do is just um, change your application's output and input device and it will work. Who's your main waifu? I mean, from the videos, I think I can kind of tell. But there's honestly no main waifu. Like, there are just so many good anime characters out there, right? What do you do when you're Brazilian and can't subscribe to DeepL? Yup, we have that Google Translate feature already. I'm new here and I want to ask, do you watch? Okay, buddy. <laughs> I am new here and you immediately ask this. I really want to know what other questions you ask to people that you meet for the first time. But I don't want this channel to be demonetized, so I'm just gonna skip it. Sorry. Does it require a lot of knowledge in programming? I only have an academic level on Python. Do you mean like to use the system or to build something like this system? If it's to build something like this system, I would say, honestly, since I also have an academic level on Python, it doesn't really require that much knowledge on programming. To use this system, I hope this setup guide is able to allow those people that have no knowledge on programming to be able to use it as well. Like, would it be possible to use program on this Discord. Did no one see how I used it on Discord with my Japanese friend Yuta? Like, come on guys. Is it possible that somebody with zero programming background like myself to follow your guide step by step to be able to create or set up? To create, uh, that might be a bit hard. To set it up, I hope I, hope I explained it well enough. What is a root file and how do I run it? Weep social or maybe weep 
weep discordious introvert weeps hangout server and you see you can tell that a lot of people do not have the deep l api token so that's why i added in another way to use google translate instead can you give us hints to your next idea honestly i have no next idea yet so i can't really even give you hints about it it's called name idea misunderstood weeps thanks for your hard work oh that's nice why, why is that a smiley face melting in itself? And we are done with the Q&A. Okay, so for, for the Discord server name, to be honest, I might just go with I might just go with this because um I don't want it be to be too complicated or too hard to find as well. Like this is just the simplest one to be honest. And I think I'll actually leave you guys to create the Discord server since I have actually no idea how to create one and how to set up the rules or like settings on it on anything. Once someone has made it, feel free to post the Discord link in the comments so people can join. I'll probably pin that comment once I see it. Hopefully it'll be a much easier way for you guys to discuss like some of the issues with setting up and running uh, language deep AI because just me alone trying to fix everyone's issues is a bit hard. Some of them are errors that I've never seen before so hopefully you guys can, can help me as well. So I look forward to the Discord server that you guys will create. Hopefully I answered everyone's questions and this setup guide was able to clarify any issues that you may have faced when setting it up. Now I actually have no idea when I'll be back for the next video because I kind of have to prepare for my driving test to get my license and also for a dumb cyber certification thing that I'll probably end up failing because I actually haven't started studying at all and the exam is like only next week because I was too busy trying to get this, these videos out. I mean when it comes to YouTube or, this, or uh, certification, I'm pretty sure we know which one has a higher priority. But hopefully now I have some free time to uh, sort my life out. And with that being said guys, thanks for watching yet another dumb video and uh, I'll see you when I see you I guess.